So I think the next you know, discussion is about car T cells and car T cells remind me a little bit about going shopping for a car because there are many different varieties of yeah. car T cells and we're calling them that. So let's have a discussion. This is a very exciting. The Stephen Grupp you know, paper coming out abstract here at, at the ASH 2014 is, you know, has very positive uh, results and there's obviously many different cars. So I'll start, start so, with you. Yeah. Let me describe to you what is a car. I mean, <laughs> car is a, the initials of chimeric antigen receptor. Uh, it's modifying the autologous cells, uh, again, uh, with, like, like the Binantunumab is doing it, but it's done outside the body. You take out the T cells and you genetically engineering them by inserting a new gene that is composed of uh, a part of the antibody that targets the CD19. So it's the same target as binatunumab, but also has moieties of, that activate uh, uh, T cell function. And so you have a, a T cell that is, is an, an autologous T cell. It's not going to react against cancer cells. Now you genetically engineer it first to target the cell and then it gets activated to act against the cells. And the different cars are really the different constructs of these uh, genes. So it's very technically sophisticated. Uh, which car is better is not known. The, it's a gene therapy, so it's all the problems of gene therapy is introduced by a virus, a retrovirus, there's the issues of quality control of I mean, it's actually it's considered a gene therapy. Uh, and so the, the procedure itself, by leukophoresis, we take the cells out of the body. It, it goes to the lab and they're genetically engineering. And that takes some time. And for now, it's four to five weeks. We talked about ALL. They cannot wait so much. In fact, we use Vin Christine as a bridge to, to car or a bridge to transplant sometime. You know, the liposome Vin Christine. Uh, so there is a time that you need to wait, and then it's given back to the patients, and at that time the car starts to act. Now, what we know about this, there's three places that are doing it. One is our center, the University of Pennsylvania and the NIH. They're using different cars, but they're also using different patient populations. Um, you can, the, the patient doesn't have to be in a complete remission like in transplant, because you isolate the T cells so you, you don't uh, engineer, the, well you can't engineer the B cells, it's only for B cells by the way, you can't use TLL, you can't use this drug or all neither Brunatunumab. And the response rates in all studies in are very, very high, 80% response rate. So as a proof of concept, this is an extremely active treatment. And it's more act now, blinatumumab is a drug that you give it, and once you stop giving the drug, the T cells stop acting. Here you're infusing the patient's old cells, and they remain for months, and they continue to fight against. And one of the questions is this modality can cure patients. In our center, we see that they lose these cells over time, and we still don't think it is a curative approach. In the University of Pennsylvania, they uh, have, they think some of patients are cured. Uh, and well, they the longest patient has been about two years out. Yeah, but they also find the, the uh, they, you can identify the, the T cells that were molecularly changed, genetically changed. But they also treat most of the patients as children, and ours is adults. So, and so, so let's just stop for a second and go back and say, you're giving these cells, but it came with a cost, the cost of cytokine, you know, so uh, that's I think, syndrome. So tell me about that, or maybe so I, that. So as a person who's been in the trenches of this car, it's, it's, it's not an easy treatment. Um, the, the immediate toxicity is even more than transplant. You don't have the GVH, that's the big benefit. And the main toxicity is the cytokine release syndrome, which is uh, because these T cells are activated, and they act against the leukemia because there's a release of a variety of cytokines, for example, IL-6, interferons, IL-1, at very high concentrations, and, and they cause uh, a, a, a syndrome which is very similar to a, another syndrome as well, macrophage activated syndrome, and it's presented with fever, and if it's only fever, these are the mild ones, but 
those who get the more severe ones, and in, we, it's about half of the patients, uh, develop a clinical picture of septic shock, but without bacteria, hypotension. Half the patients are in the, I, uh, in the ICU. Uh, uh, they intubate it. Uh, and that's temporary because this, this storm, it's a fight between these normal cells and leukemia cells. And it's really a storm, the patients are sick. The second side effect, and, and I think that's something we need to resolve, is the neurological side effect. And it presents as seizures and as, uh, as altered mental status. It's not just like a... a, a, a uh, one site. Uh, so we give them anticonvulsants. We treat them with anti IL 6 or IL 6 receptor inhibitors. The problem is you can treat this with steroids, that then you'll block the activity. And one of the problems that we always face somebody is getting so sick, I mean, we, just, we can't take it anymore. And we give the steroids and it, it blocks it. So the response rates are very, very high. But there is a price, and I would say, the main factor that determines the severity or the frequency is the tumor burden. If you will do it with much less tumor burden, the, the cytokine release syndrome, especially that one, will be significantly lower. So let me ask Mark a question. So now that blenitumumab has been approved, so we can have it off the shelf, if you will, is that the bridge to CAR T cells, maybe not the bridge to transplant? Is that something and decreasing the risk because they, they... Well, there is a problem though, because both of them work on CD19. And we had that problem where we were doing both trials. And we have to choose which one, because you can select for CD19 negative cells with binotunumab, and then you won't have the cow working on them. And actually, this data, as some patients that relapsed after cow, the, the tumor cells did not have the, C, the target, the CD19. I think that... Uh, is a potential uh, problem. There were patients, uh, particularly I know in the, the Pennsylvania series, who had received linitumumab, failed, and then responded to, to CAR therapy. You know, whether linitumumab should be sequenced with CAR therapy, I think, is a question that's unanswered, and, and uh, I'm not sure that not, we necessarily need to go down that road. I see them a little bit more as either or, uh, but certainly would be open to you know, considering uh, somewhat different approaches. The, the car actually are moving in a direction very, very fast. And actually, they're commercialized now. And they're, going, they're actually applying for approval from the FDA. And it's, it's, a, it's a gene you have to approve. It's not a drug. I mean, it's something totally different than binatunoma, which is, is the drug. Although the concept is very similar. So there, there are other concepts as well. I mean, to avoid that it's a genetic or a virally, you know, transfected, there's, there's RNAi transfection technology. So you just try to bring some gene targets temporarily into the, into the T cells and then transfect them. So which theoretically would may alleviate the propagation of the effect because those are the own um, cells. So they, you know, they propagate in, in vivo and stay alive. So if that will work, it's not quite clear because one word of caution, and I mentioned this earlier with CD19, we have the ideal tumor antigen. They were by specific antibody um, in, in for solid cancers based on some, some solid cancer antigens. And there was actually in some trials, or depending on the antigen, you saw dramatic side effects. In some patients, there were dramatic um, 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 lysis of the heart muscle. So we have great antigens. So by defining the antigens better and maybe modifying how long things are propagated, we may become even more specific in the future. So to be com complete or fair to some other concepts, there's PD-1 and PDL one antibodies. So from improved in melanoma recently, PD-1. Um, so they're essentially immune checkpoint targeting. Those are antibodies that take away the inhibit inhibition to activate the immune system, simply speaking. So they're proof for melanoma. They're being tried now in lymphoma, but also in, 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 in MDS and some other cancers. There was a recent abstract here in Hodgkin's lymphoma, dramatic response, even in refractory Hodgkin's lymphoma patients after transplant, after CD30 antibody targeting therapy. So this is to look out for. And there's some um, CD19 antibodies a trial we were involved in representing at ASH this year. So linking it to cytotoxic again. So CD19 antibody linked to cytotoxic in patients with lymphoma, 
but as, as well with ALL, and responses were seen as well. So there are other, other avenues apart from bispecific or CAR T cells, so an antibody-based uh, therapies with or without naked antibodies or with a, with a uh, payload. We talked earlier about...